Welcome back to the crypto simulation. If you're new to my channel, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment, set your notifications. I talk about all things data-driven and market psychology-driven, but nothing here is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, and any price predictions or other projections I make should be taken as entertainment, and you should always do your own research. So tonight, I'm going to do an update on Bitcoin, including asking a very bold question, which is, could it be possible that our cycle top comes in August of this year? I want to share some data with you that I've noticed and see it, what you think. And uh, I want to, just before we go down that rabbit hole, let's talk about Bitcoin on the three-day. I did a video on this a little while ago, and I talked about the Lux Algo low liquidity zones, and we are in it. So you remember I was talking about Bitcoin, I think when it was around 47, 46K, somewhere around there. And I mentioned these two low liquidity zones, and we're currently battling one of them. And just to think about and remind you why we're battling, it's, it has to do with horizontal resistance. So if you go back to the 2021 cycle, these are, these are not like mysterious zones. It's just you have to think about all the people who came in here and bought Bitcoin or came in here and bought Bitcoin and held it all the way down. Um, they had to wait a really long time and they're starting to offload some of their Bitcoin right now. Now, will that sell pressure be enough to you know, move Bitcoin off of its uh, mountain here and drop it back down? I I'm not really sure of that. I don't know. My base case has been that we would you know, have a red end to February. Seeing that it's February 18th, I only have about, what, 11 days with the leap year to really uh, realize that. And frankly, I'm not even sure that we're going to have a red February at the end of this month. Uh, this has uh, been a lot more resilient than I suspected it would be. But we are in a Lux Algo low liquidity zone, and this, if we're going to have a rejection anywhere, I would anticipate this could be the place. Let's take a look at some other indicators to see what, what the charts are saying. Now, I also want to disclose, as we look at the Wyckoff volume indicator here, we did have a pretty big sell wick on the three-day in early January when we wicked down to around 38.5. And I will tell you, it is possible that was the correction that I've been talking about. You know, there's this correction coming. It's possible that could have been one of the corrections. I find it really hard to believe that we're just going to blast off through March. March is usually a red month. Um, there's various reasons for that, including some people having to cash out crypto to pay their taxes. Um, and just seasonally, there's usually, you know, corrections going on in the S&P. So we could see some of that play out. Um, we, we haven't had a really sizable correction in quite some time. I mean, honestly, since about October of last year. And if we keep going like this without a correction, um, that's rather unhealthy. And I have talked about that in previous videos. So I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be able to ever be able to predict the future accurately, but I can just tell you what the charts are telling me at any moment in time. And I have the willingness to definitely pivot if need be. So we talked, we called out the inverse head and shoulders pattern here. In a previous video, that has played out. We have moved to the upside, We're smack in the middle of this low liquidity zone. Uh, we can see that sell pressure did level off and we have some buy volume coming in. That is, you know, fairly modest at the moment, but um, decent nonetheless. So let's see if there's any other clues, perhaps, of what might be coming next. Well, the ADX and DI on the three day look pretty strong. We've got the ADX actually having some bullish divergence of its own at around 32. The DI is, um, it's putting in lower highs, but um, you know it's it still looks bullish. This is just very slight bearish divergence. Of course, things could change, but this looks pretty bullish to me. Here's Bitcoin on the weekly, and you can see we're stacked up above the 10-week and also the 40-week SMAs. Um, you know we've been fighting with the 10-week, and we won that battle, and then we just blasted right off. So. I'd probably have to go to some pretty small time frame to see what moving average we're even running on here. Maybe like a five week or something like that. This is this is pretty bullish. I'm not going to lie. This is bullish. Speaking of lower term uh, moving averages, this is the triple exponential moving average bubble, which illustrates some pretty short moving averages. I think the five, the seven week, the nine week and the 14 week, something like that. And when we, what we're seeing here is uh, this is telling me we probably have another leg up coming. Uh, and that may seem kind of surprising considering where we are at in the Luxalgo low liquidity zone. But I'm just telling you what the charts are telling me. This is what they're saying. They're saying, hey guys, we're going to move up again. And while that is uh, certainly surprising to me, uh, considering how much upward momentum we've had, that's what it's saying. And I, and I can't ignore that. 
here is my Gaussian snake and it looks so healthy. I mean, that you've got just a tightening green concave up band. This is telling me we are really bullish right now on the weekly. This is bullish. And you know, yeah, we can fall down into it, but honestly, this is turned up so high right now. I think we're heading up. I think we're going up higher. So what's going on? I mean, like, is Bitcoin ever going to correct or we just go up forever? I think we need to answer that question. And to really address that, we need to look at a much higher time frame. And in this higher time frame, I'm going to make the case for a peak to Bitcoin in August of 2024, this year, six months from now. Okay, this is not a crystal ball prediction, but this is just based on what I'm seeing in the data. I'll let you look at the data for yourself, draw your own conclusions. Um, I don't have any pride about my predictions. So if you disagree with me, you know, write in the comments, tell me where you think I'm wrong and I'll be glad to look it over myself. But I'm starting to see signs of increasing strength from Bitcoin and uh, you know it's unbelievable how strong this asset has been this year. I know a lot of it has to do with the ETF inflows for sure. You know, I don't really concern myself with the news. I just look at the charts and I can tell you like, wow, Bitcoin is fierce. And it's a little too fierce for where we would be at if we were trying to consider a four year cycle. Now, I don't believe in cycles. I don't believe in cycles at all. I think that they are an artifact of the human mind and we use confirmation bias to say Bitcoin has to do this or it has to do that. I think the only thing Bitcoin has to do is oscillate around a logarithmic regression line. And that's actually what I'm going to be kind of coming back to later on. But let's take a look at some signs that I'm seeing on higher time frames, mainly the monthly time frame that make me feel like the, well, I don't want to call it the end of a cycle because then I'm kind of acknowledging the existence of one, but you have to call it something. But, but what I'm really looking for are major tops and major bottoms. And I think there's a really good chance that Bitcoin is actually gearing up to head into a mania season much earlier than what we're used to. And that we could see that mania season peak as early as August of this year. Oh, and while I have your attention here, I just noticed something. Doesn't this look like a giant flag? Like a giant bull flag right here? Um, that we've been in for quite some time. I know I said I was going to go to the monthly, but I just literally noticed this. Something happens when I'm doing these videos. I just feel like I get like this mental clarity that I don't necessarily normally have. Um, when I'm not doing these videos, okay, this is a very dubious, but you know, something like that. All right. It, it kind of looks like a flag. <laughs> like every asset's been doing this, this, uh, this time around, we have a lot of flagging going on. So uh, you know, I, I can't predict exactly what's going to happen next, but we could break out of this um, pretty soon. And this is an, also an artifact of the human mind. You're calling this a flag, but I'm just saying that's what it looks like to me. Let's just ignore the concept of cycles for a minute and take a look at this. If you saw this on any other chart, we actually looked at uh, Arrow recently, an altcoin that I really uh, love. And I don't own it, but I, I do like it. What if we put Bitcoin on like a you know, kind of a, what is this called? Like a, a curved path. And we start that path in, you know, December of 2018 when Bitcoin bottomed. And we just kind of see it, you know, riding along this, this path. So a formation like this is very bullish. So like, it's almost as if, and, and I know that I'm not, you know, I know that there's other um, people in crypto Twitter that have been calling for similar things. So I'm not saying this idea is necessarily unique, but it definitely fits with my general thesis, which is, you know, if we just ignore cycles and we focus on logarithmic regression and we just look at what the charts are telling us and ignore these tops as being like, uh, oh, this is the end of a cycle or something like that. We can see this, you know, we can actually see a lot more if we let go of that confirmation bias. And this looks like one long path to blast off. Um, of course, how high will that blast off actually be is, you know, anyone's guess. I'm not thinking it's going to go super high, honestly, um, even though this is a really strong bullish formation. And that could be my own confirmation bias. Maybe I'm wrong, right? But this is something that I, I, I noticed as well. Now, this is a really um, interesting metric. You've seen me use it before if you've been following me. It's the Wave Trend 3D tool, which I call the Northern Lights. Um, and so you've got your moving averages right here of wave strength. Right? And so the higher up these go in the green, 
the stronger the trend. And this is the kernel moving average in here. And what I want to point out to you is that if we kind of like look back, for instance, at what happened the last time with our major cycle peaks, we got a peak here in about April or May of 2021 on the you know, on the wave strength um, moving average. And then we had another one in November. These correspond to our cycle peaks. Okay, we actually had one, a smaller one out here in September, 2020. Uh, now the kernel moving average doesn't top out until after the cycle peak um, comes. So usually like maybe a, a month or two, and you can see that happen in January of 2022. And that's really where the bear market momentum started coming in and we started to head into oversold <coughs> territory. In the previous cycle, you can see that we had, uh, again, our cycle top around December of 17. The kernel moving average, though, didn't really peak out until around February of 2018, Then we got our dramatic drop there. If you go back to the one before that, we had our, I think this was our double peak cycle. You had the wave trend momentum here, topping out in April of 13, and also December of 13, didn't really turn red until 2014, and then we came down. So this monthly wave trend momentum indicator is huge, and you can see that the kernel moving average has been putting in lower highs over time. I'm not really too concerned with the lows. I'm focusing on the highs and I can see kind of like a trend line that's forming here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this and we're going to go ahead and draw a trend line. And this um, wave trend is almost like a cheat code. And you know, to me, markets move in waves uh, via log logarithmic regression. It's just waves of oversold, overbought, oversold, overbought. And it's just the basic human emotions of fear and greed playing out on the charts that's that's what you're seeing so if you um were to just focus exclusively on the wave trend and draw maybe like a trend line and let's assume that the 20 um whoops sorry about that let's fix that let's just assume that the 2016 cycle went a little higher and kind of overextended but let, let's let's say that otherwise it, it, it you know pretty much respected this trend line. I'm gonna extend this out just a little bit more, and then what I'm gonna do from here is we're gonna take an arrow, and I'm not as fast as some other crypto uh, people who can like find these a lot quicker. But let's see, putting here and let's see if we were just to kind of follow the general path of you know where this would go. Well, it's putting me in December of 2024. <laughs> okay, so I, I drew two arrows because, you know, truthfully, making making an actual date of a price prediction is silly anyways. But you can see that in the 2016 cycle, we shot up pretty vertically. In the, um, the last one, we kind of didn't. We kind of stalled out here in June of 2021, and then you got your double peak. So it, it's hard to say exactly how it's going to behave, but I'm seeing more similarities to this one this time around. So I don't know exactly what trajectory this is going to take, but um, it definitely puts it puts the possibility, I think July might be too soon. Um, that might be too vertical, but here we go, August. So, you know, sometime between August and December seems reasonable if this trend continues to accelerate um, to the upside. So we can see that the uh, green moving averages are of the price momentum uh, are starting to move up. We're we're kind of getting into overbought, but we're not like super overbought. You only get that way near peaks. So um, it looks to me if we if we do have this trend of higher lo of lower highs that we could hit another lower high right here. And this is not like an artifact of cycles. This is just diminishing volatility. That's what you're seeing um, over time. And you know, it's it's to me just cycles are kind of irrelevant. This is just where we are in the waves. So let's assume we had a cycle top sometime between August and December. Um, what would that look like? Like how would that play out potentially? And so we need to go return to the charts to see that. Oh, but before we do that, I also want to show you another metric that's that's potentially pointing to an earlier cycle. I have to call it something, right? So an earlier major top. I'm gonna try to. I'm actually gonna try to stop calling it cycle. Uh, it's just I'm so ingra it's so ingrained in my brain. I'm going to try to call things major tops and major bottoms, local tops and local bottoms, because to me that's more accurate. But please forgive me if I keep using the word cycle. This is the Money Flow Index Oscillator Volume Trendoscope. And this basically oscillates between overbought and oversold. And you can see we don't tend to spend a lot of time in either region. 
And what I've noticed is that with each successive iteration of major top to major bottom, uh, we have had this uh, overbought region kind of trend down and we're getting, we're starting to get like a series of lower highs. And what are these highs corresponding to? Well, this one is the March, 2021. So right, right before our cycle peak back then or major top of December 17, we had one actually in August 17. And then you have the 2013 of December and April. I'm gonna ignore the previous one. And you got your bear markets down here. So um, where are we at now with respect to previous uh, cycles? <laughs> I'm annoying myself. It's like, I don't know what to call them. And you're probably thinking there, just call it a cycle. Well, I have like issues with that. Okay, so we are currently trending towards overbought. And you see this line has stepped down, suggesting potentially a lower high coming in. The last time we were trending upwards and hitting this level, right, which we're at now in February 2024, was in, um, it looks like, if, if I can get this right, October of 2020, barely late in the last um, go around before we hit our first major top, which wasn't quite in March. It was like March, April. I think it was April was like the major top, but we were still over overbought, so who cares who's counting. Uh, then before that, November 2016, Okay, so, you know, nearly a year before we had our major peak, and before that, December of 2012, so not that long before peak. So it's, it's hard to say exactly how long it's going to be, but we know once we get to this extension, that that usually spells that our bullish momentum is running out. Now, what happened last time is we, we had a summer lull, and then we kind of inched our way back up, but this was just a lower high um, on the money flow index oscillator, meaning that the asset actually wasn't um, overbought when we when we got to that second peak. That second peak was more like a dead cat bounce. Um, even though we had a higher price, you have to remember this is log regression. So a higher price a few months later is actually a lower price relative to the original one. It'd be silly to say that that November wasn't the peak. It, it was a significant peak, absolutely. But from a logarithmic regression point of view, the first peak was more mathematically significant. Okay, and you can see that in, the, in these conditions. So what I'm saying is even if we were to top out earlier, right, and we were to have a major top, don't assume that that's the end. We could still have dead cats. We could have potentially something like what played out last time. We, that I have no way of knowing. What I would like to do though is zoom in on the MFI oscillator and kind of project if we follow a general trend kind of like, you know, this or like this, when could we expect to see overbought like, you know, screaming to us? And once we've crossed this line, by the way, like in the last time we did it, we went pretty much straight to the top here. We got to um, a level of about 80 and we, we had a nice correction. Something like that could play out this time. Here we just shot straight up. So. You know, I have no clue what's going to happen. All I know is this is dialed up and it looks ready to blast off. All right, so I've blown up this indicator and we're going to go ahead and stick an arrow on here and try to, you know, figure this out. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> look, even July is a possibility here. So maybe here, right? It's, it's hard to say exactly how this will play out. Could it be more kind of kinked this way? It's possible. So this is suggesting to me that we could see the maximum overbought conditions hitting sometime in the summer. I can't say July or August for sure, but somewhere around then we could be putting in that lower high, right? And that's, no, I don't want to draw a horizontal line. I want to draw a trend line and just connect like something like that, right? So I think that's reasonable to expect, uh, to anticipate. I mean, unless we come up and we start chopping around in here, which doesn't usually happen. Like you, you have one pullback here. This was a more major pullback that we had. So that's certainly possible. I have no way of knowing exactly what's going to happen. But what I can tell you is this is really dialed up right now. Um, I mean, it's just been pretty much straight up since August of 2023. We blasted off. So we are, we are pretty much in the same place we were at in October of 2020. And we put in our first 
major peak just six months later. Here, in November of 2016, we put in a significant peak in February of 2017. Next one came August of 2017, and next one December 17. That was a beautiful, beautiful cycle. Um, you know, the path that that we took to get to the all-time high was was just very, very, you know, as nice looking as you can possibly get. And I feel like there's a lot that we're, we have in common with this one, and I've shown that in a previous video. We could have a very diminished weaker version of what happened in 2016-17. You might say, well, why would it be weaker? And the answer is, back in 2016-17, we were moving around just to hundreds of dollars, you know, sloshing that around. You can do that very easily. Whereas right now, we're sloshing around tens of thousands of dollars. And it's hard to do that. It's hard to move that in a big way without some like cataclysmic event, you know, white swan or something like that. So, um, you know, I'm seeing like an inverse head and shoulders here. I think we're going to blast off quickly. This is making me think that we're closer to the end than we are to the beginning, right? I think that the 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 end the this the top the major top that we're likely to get, I think, is going to come a lot sooner than people expect, even than I expect. I have allowed for variance all the way to even the end of this year because I figured it's an election year. Maybe that happens with the S and P, but maybe Bitcoin peaks out earlier. Um, it could surprise everybody and, and maybe this isn't the only peak. Maybe it comes back down and then peaks again. No way to know that. Impossible to know that. But I still think we should prepare ourselves for the possibility that something like this could happen. We could get a summer peak and uh, that throws like everybody off. It could happen. So if you've been following me for any length of time, you know that I love log channels. So I have a logarithmic regression channel that's been fit to all the data from Bitcoin's inception. This is on the index. Um, and you can see, I don't, I don't like the word cycles. I just like oscillating around a, a mean. And you can see that these oscillations become um, less dramatic over time <laughs> as more money enters the space. These are uh, plus or minus three standard deviations from the mean, the blue lines, and what in uh, one half, uh, increments. And then this white one is a linear log logarithmic channel. And this is also three standard deviations. The one being the, the mean line being this one here, plus one, plus two, plus three. I don't think we're heading up there again, probably ever. Um, but what, you know, what's interesting is we could, we could look at the diminished fault, you know, diminishing returns here. We hit the plus three here. We only hit the plus two. Here we hit the, I'm sorry, this wasn't plus two. This is plus two and a half. No, is this plus two? This is plus two, my bad. Here we hit the plus one and a half. So it's not unreasonable to think that maybe we diminish down to only hitting the plus a half this time. And, you know, it's been a few years since we've had a major cycle peak. And why not? I mean, could we also hit the plus one? I guess that's possible, but that's not my base case. So let's pull up... Uh, where is it? Right here. Let's go to create a parallel channel. And then maybe we can zoom in before I do this. Let me put the arrow back on so I don't accidentally draw something funky. And let's extend this channel out and see if we peaked out in August, where would that put us price wise? And we can maybe get an idea of why something under 100,000 in the middle of the summer is not so ridiculous. And it's not like mysterious or anything like that. So I'm not like the best at drawing these, oh, better than that usually. Okay, then I'm gonna edit this, bring it down, a nice parallel channel that extends out further than I need it to. So let's say we were to end this, you know, this leg and get a major, you know, blow off top sometime in August. That's giving you a price of around eighty thousand dollars eighty thousand dollars right and you can see that that moves us down on the channel like on the log channel see that linear channel it moves us down to a lower band like this is the minus one standard deviation so this would move us down to like the minus one and this is minus 1.2 standard deviations and so you can see kind of how this is not really that unreasonable it's a triple top um when you take into account you know, the fact that it's been nearly three years since we've had a top, not two and a half years, right? Three years since we've had this technical top. Um, 
about a little over two years since we've had this one. Well, what if we went out to um, December? Where would that take us to? Price of about 90000 So I, I don't know. I don't see the momentum being able to take us this high up here. These are prices in the 100000s and you know what? Maybe you disagree with me. Maybe you think that can happen. I'm not seeing it. I'm just not seeing it. I think at some point we're going to need to correct from all this bullish momentum. Could we come back and test this again later? It's possible. That could happen. Um, I'm not counting on it because I think that the United States has a very high chance of going into a recession by the end of this year around the time of elections. So, yeah, I mean, Bitcoin could peak before the S&P. And maybe it screws around here a little bit. You know, we don't lose bullish momentum easily. So we, it wouldn't surprise me at all if we had like a second peak or a dead cat or something like that uh, later on. Okay, Bitcoin always loves to surprise us. But this seems like a nice way to complete this uh, last leg of this of this bull run that we're in. Let's call it what it is. We're not going to see, we're very unlikely to see mania like we saw in 2016. But I think, you know, we are in that we're, we're 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 getting into the transition into mania i feel like the ha the having is being a little bit front run everybody knows oh bitcoin is bullish around the having but we're very bullish right now i mean as i've been doing this video you've seen bitcoin's price already clear 52k um i mean the big target is 53 i don't think that's going to happen while i'm doing the video that would be something wouldn't it but you can kind of appreciate that uh an early cycle peak, if you want to, if you believe in cycles, I'm not telling you not to, uh, or an early major top is not out of the question. And if you zoom out, you know, when in doubt, zoom out. That's what I like to say. If you zoom out and look at the rainbow, the monochromatic logarithmic regression rainbow, here we are pretty much straddling the median line. And it just, it just seems like we have a very weak trend. Like this trend, like when you compare it to like all this data, it's weak. So I don't really see it having the oomph to get itself much higher than the 0.5 logarithmic standard or this, the 0.5 uh, standard deviation line. I just don't see it. I don't see it having the strength to get to one. Where's that going to come from? I mean, it's going to have to turn up a lot higher. And remember, we're sloshing around $50,000 now. We're not sloshing around 20000 30000 We're sloshing around fifty. It's going to be 60 pretty soon, potentially. You know, that's a lot of money to move around. As we're, gear, as we're getting closer to 100,000, you know, the time that it's going to take for us to get from 100,000 to a million, we could spend the better part of a decade and a half doing that, okay? I know that's not what you want to hear, and you're thinking, well, mass adoption and all this, but it's possible that we spend uh, a lot of time straddling this log regression line in, in this channel as it starts to flatten out. And... Um, that's just something to consider. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, um, but I think you should prepare yourself for the possibility that this cycle, if you believe in them, could end in uh, the summer, in August, or potentially December. Okay, I, I'm starting to lean more towards August, honestly, than I am towards December, based on these things that I've shown you. Now, with this information, what should you do? Here's what I think you should do if you were me, which you're not. So here's what I would do because I don't want to give you financial advice. So no financial advice, but here's what I would do. I would start preparing myself to, I would actually start now researching risk metrics. Okay. Find risk metrics that you like. And if you're not sure what a risk metric is, um, there's all kinds of ones out there. So I know that, you know, Ben at Into the Cryptoverse has risk metrics on his premium site. Um, Jay and Mark at Polarity Digital have risk metrics on their site. I think that uh, Lars has some from, I, I forget which crypto channel he does. I, I don't really follow these these people anymore. I used to, but I, I to keep my technical analysis as pure as possible, I, I don't really follow anybody online because I don't want to be influenced. But uh, my point is there's a lot of risk metrics out there and I have some that I use, which I can share with you. Um, I think right now might be a little soon to share them, but let me know in the comments if you feel like it isn't too soon and I'd be happy to share kind of my strategy that I use, which is um, a combination of different risk metrics. 
Uh, one of them I can't show you because it's proprietary, but I can show you. It's not mine. It's it's from, it's uh, it's Polarity Digital's. I use theirs, uh, premium ones. They have some really really good ones based on machine learning algorithms. And I'll drop a, I'll drop a link to theirs. Uh, I like theirs better than the Into the Cryptoverse ones. I actually find that Polarity Digital's um, are more accurate on shorter time frames. Like they were screaming buy at 26k when uh, the Into the Cryptoverse risk, risk metrics were kind of saying, nah, don't DCA here. So I feel like uh, Polarity Digital with Mark and Jay, their their uh, risk metrics are more dynamic. So I like them. And then I have some trading view ones that I use in combination with those. And I have back tested them and they've worked out pretty well. They are a little tricky to use. Um, it's kind of my own little formula that I've thrown together. Logarithmic regression is a pretty good risk metric in itself. You know, when you start getting up to that plus 0.5, you got to pay attention. What is everything saying? What well, look at my indicators. Are they flashing overbought, overbought, overbought? Yeah. You know? So, uh, you know, here's people making calls for, I think plan B recently made a call for like, you know, hyper, what is it? What is it called? Um, mass adoption of Bitcoin. And we're going to just fly off to, you know, 300 K or something like that. You know, I respect Plan B, and I think that he's got good content. He's a smart guy, but that's a load of nonsense to me. I would be shocked. If someone can come back here and dunk on me if we go to 300K in this iteration. I don't think so. Do I think we'll eventually get to 300K? I think so. I do. I think we'll get there. I just don't see it happening this year. Or next year, even if, even if we extend it out that far. So, um... Feel free to disagree with me about that, though. You know what's interesting too is if we hit the 0.5 log re regression line, that actually corresponds to the 2019 peak. So wouldn't that be something? We have this major peak, we come down, we have another little bounce off of it, we come down, we have this double top, we come down, and maybe we do something kind of like what we did in 2019, just drawn out and extended. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, why don't you let me know what you think of this idea? I'm curious. I want to hear from you. So. Oh, and I forgot to mention this earlier. If you made it this far in the video, I'm going to leave a little note about it. So I have a free Telegram group that has nearly 100 members. I've been growing like crazy. I've only been doing these videos for about two weeks. That Telegram group is called the Snake Pit, but it's spelled with, you know, S-N-E-K because it's cooler that way. And please like, subscribe, comment, and share this video with everybody that you know. Help get my content out there so that I can continue doing this and I can continue providing valuable analysis that you can then look at and interact with and come you know, share your opinion with either here on YouTube or in the Telegram group where we have um, some really amazing people. So I'll leave links in the description for Polarity Digital and uh, let you check that out for yourself if you like and uh, Into the Cryptoverse too if you want. Um, I will say that uh, Into the Cryptoverse has some incredible variety of risk metrics, and uh, it's just I've found that Mark and Jay at Polarity Digitals um, have been more reliable for me personally with Bitcoin. I can't speak to the other metrics, just to Bitcoin. Um, but Into the Cryptoverse has a, a plethora of charts that you can analyze, and so yeah, I'll leave I'll leave, link, leave links to both. I'm not really too aware of other risk metrics that are out there. There's a guy, Lars, um, for some reason I can't quite remember his entire name. I used to watch him a long time ago. Uh, he has uh, some kind of risk metric too. Um, so yeah, and let me know if you want if you want me to do a video on that. So again, nothing in these videos is financial advice, uh, pure entertainment. And uh, yeah, I will see you next time. Take care.